Okay, so today we're going to discuss the last topic in the parasitology. We have here the phylum Platyelmentes and we have here the class Cestoda. So we have here the general characteristics of your cesto. Cestos, okay, other name for that is your tapeworm. So we have that one. Still, this one is belonging to your Platyelmentes. Therefore, we're expecting that the adult worm most likely to be flat even like tape like that's why they are being called here tapeworm because of their length so like just like our tape measure it's very long and another thing about this one so it just differ with your trematodes because the body is divided here into several segments okay so we have your illustration for that and we have especially the strobila and deer are divided here into several segments making this one a segmented segmented worm Okay, another one, they don't have here the alimentary tract or they don't also have here the vascular system. For adult worms, just like also your trematodes, also hermaphrodites, meaning that one is uh, monoecious, so they try to house here both the male and female reproductive organs. Okay, so most likely the adult worm, we're expecting that one to inhabit here our gastrointestinal tract found in the definitive host. Whereas the larval stages could be found here, the front tissues in the intermediate host. So we could have your vertebrates or even invertebrates as the intermediate host. Okay, our cestos is basically divided into two orders. We have here the pseudophilidia and we have also here the cyclophilidia. The pseudophilidia or pseudo means to say this one is your false. So this is your false tapeworm so there's only one species belonging to that we have your diphilobotrium latum the rest of the species here in your cestos belong to your cyclophilidia I mean to say they are through cestos or through tapeworm so before we differentiate between your pseudo and your cyclophilidia so we have here the okay, the composition of the body of the entire worm so we have here the scolex so the scolex is the head part there's also the the organ of attachment there's also here the whole fuss okay so if you have here the drawing of that this is the scolex the head part so what we see in the scolex these are there are four these are your four cup suckers and we have here the rostilium or the mouth part wherein there are arm here with some of that would have arm here with the hooks or spines others wala silang pag sinabing arm pinto say my hooks or spines pag an arm so wala siyang hooks or spines or spines then again other species here would have here arm others would have an arm so this is collex for the next part we have here the neck part the neck part is between your collex and your strobila Okay, the neck part is the feeding stage or the organ of um, that's the budding stage or the budding the, the budding uh, part also called the feeding zone or the region of the growth and lastly we have here your strobila the strobila again is our chain of your proglotis okay, or segments natawag okay so pag sinabing chain of proglotis or chain of your segments. Okay, so I mean your strobila is the chain of your proglotis. Your proglotis is divided into three parts. The immature, mature, and the gravid. Okay, the immature na proglotis, primarily this part is made up of the segments which are um, immature or not yet fully developed. The mature proglotis, on the other hand, made up the segments which are fully developed already. And for the gravid, so gravid means to say those are the proglotis or the segments wherein they contains, that contains already the eggs. So like for example, this one is your drawing. So this one, dito maumpisa ang ating immature. Dito na part is the mature and dito na part the end part will be your gravid. So immature here, nagiging mature and nagiging gravid. Pag immature, ito siya malapit sa, malapit sa neck part. And again, the immature will it contains here the underdeveloped segments. Okay, and uh, 
the mature one would have here the fully developed and we have the graph it contains the eggs. Okay, so again, these are your proglottids or the segments. Entire segmented part, you call it once your strobula. Okay, then we have here the life cycle. The life cycle divided here into stages. We have here the egg part. Okay, the egg stage or the ova, mostly of them, they have here the hexagon. It's like they have here the striated, striated egg shell with um, hexagon embryo or six. With the embryo inside having six hooklets. That's hexagon embryo. For the larva stages, we have here different larva stages as to different species. Okay, so you could have here your... Okay, the procercoid, the plerocercoid in the case of your uh, diphilobotrium latum. could also have the cysticercos for the tenia species. You could also have here the cysticercoid in the case of your dipelidrum hymenolepis. You could also have here your rilitina. Other larva stages includes here your Hydatidsis, in the case of your Echinococcus, and we have also here the Cynorosus, in the case of your uh, Multiceps, Multiceps. For the adult stage, so again, that one can be found here in the definitive host. Okay, now we have here the differentiation between your pseudo- Philigia, and we have also here the order Cyclophilidia. Again, the Pseudophilidia includes your Diphilobotrium latum, and all the other species of your cells belong to your Cyclophilidia. Okay, so we have here the main difference. First, we have the scolex or the mouth part. Okay, the scolex of your Pseudophilidia, I would describe this one as your almond shape, spatulate, spoon shape, and it contains here a sucking This we call it what is your grooves. And you call it specifically as your Bothria. For the Cyclophilidia, again, that one, we have here the French shape, club shape, rhombic shape, and made up of four cup suckers. Hindi lang siya parang grooves, but rather really a sucker. And that might be containing here, some of that is arm. Pag sinabing arm, meron siyang spines or hooks. Pag un unarmed, binito say wala siyang spines or hooks. Then we have here the segments. We have the proglotids. The proglotids here can be found on the, the genital pore. It's found on the central area. Whereas your uh, cyclophilidae is genital pore found at the side marginal. Pitellaria scattered versus your concentrated. Then we have also here the uterine pore. So your uterine pore here, ito lumalabas ang kanilang servas their uterus. So uterine pore here, in the case of your pseudophilidia, can be found here near its genital pore, whereas the cyclophilidia wala siyang uterine pore. Then we have here the apolysis, or apolysis, when we speak about apolysis, is the method of detachment of the segments. Na di detach, especially yung mga segments sa baba, natatanggal siya, that's your apolysis. And apolysis here only occurring in your true you know, tapeworm, but not in your pseudo. Okay, then we have also here the uterus. So this is described as one as pyrometria coiled or even rosette, comparing with the branch or saccular form. Okay, then we have here the method of the egg dissemination for the pseudophilidia. Since meron siyang uterine pore, doon lumalabas, it try to shed the eggs by passing through the uterine pore. In the case of your cyclophilidia, wala silang uterine pore, so... Hindi siya makalabas sa pore or sa butas nun, but rather they try to disseminate the egg by rupturing the entire uterus. And that's the way also of the apolysis. So ito, hindi na kailangan mag-undergo ng apolysis para lumalbag-shed ang egg niya in the gravity proglotids. It's because here, meron siyang uterine pore where it's able to pass uh, through on that area or able to shed their eggs through that. This one naman, since wala siyang uterine pore, so, kailangan mag-rapture ng kanilang uterus or by the way of detaching here the gravity proglotis by your apolysis. For the ova, so we describe the pseudophilidia as having the percolated ova. That one is immature. Comparing here with your striated eggshell 
or having here the hexagon and bra, you're having six hooklets. And this one is more, this is nanoporculated, and this one is also matured compared with your pseudophilia. For the embryo inside the year of their egg, so it's ciliated. In the case of a pseudophilia, this one is non ciliated. And again, that one would have your six hooklets. So six hexacant, hexacant embryo. Then we have here the larva stages. So the larva stages of your. Um, so the villagia, there are two larva stages because it's given here, meron siyang dalawang intermediate hosts. So we're expecting that one to have its own two also, two uh, larva stages. The first intermediate host would have here the pro na larva stage. On the second intermediate host, the larva stage is the plero -cercoid. And again, these are the larva stages with, the with your cyclophilia. For the tenia, the cystocercos. For others, like your hymenolepids, then we have also here your um, dipelatrum, rilitina, you call this one cystisercoid. Then we have also here your uh, hydatid cysts in the case of your echinococcus, but also have here your cenorosus in the case of your multicep, multiceps. And then we have your intermediate host, so dalawa dito sa ating pseudophilia and only one here, most likely one with your pseudophilia. Okay, so we discussed first here the tenia solium. Okay, tenia solium, other name for that one is your pork tapeworm. Other name for that is your tenia uh, vulgaris. So human here serve as either definitive host or even intermediate host. Uh, most likely this one is... Um, this is uh, among pigs. So pigs will always be the definitive host for this. Okay, so we have here morphology for adult measured 2 to 8 meters long. Sobrang haba niya, kaya tapeworm. And the uh, scolex of that would be characterized here having four cup suckers armed with a double crown of armed with a double crown of 20, 25 to 30 20 to 30 hooklets. Okay, you would have here 800 to 900 proglotes. That's less than 1,000. The mature proglotes, on the other hand, we describe this one as square, unilateral, inadequately, irregularly, unilateral, with and irregularly arranged genital pore on consecutive segments. Meron siyang tatlong uh, ovary, trilobe ovary. Two of that is in the lateral, and one of that is in the central area with the presence of your accessory ovarian lobes. So the gravid proglotids, on the other hand, contains here less than 14 uterine lateral branches. Okay, that's less than 14. That would differentiate that one form from its counterpart, na species Hymenolepis nena. I is its counterpart, na tenia saginata. Again, this one is less than 14 lateral branches. For the eggs, this would have assumed here a characteristic egg, na striated eggshell, having this hexagon embryo inside, having six hooklets. Okay, then we have here the life cycle of your tenia solium. So, infection starts here with the egg of that. So, once taken up by ingestion process, it goes to your MES. Inside the small intestine here, stomach, it try to liberate hatch and try to liberate the embryo inside. You call it one your hexagon embryo. And the hexagon embryo try to develop here to become larva stage. Again, we call the larva stage of your tenia solium here as your cystocercos cellulose. It's very specific for that. So cystocercos cellulose is a bladder worm. So para siyang ganito, it's a bladder na meron siya dito, kanilang scolex. Or dito yung kanyang mouth part. Naka-invaginate na katago. Okay, then after that one, once mature, so lalabas na ito, magiging adult stage. And meron siyang typical na scolex for cup suckers. And because of that, they're able to attach to your small intestine. So lahat naman sila is nasa small intestine natin with the adult worm. Where they try to mature and try to develop here the different segments. So we have immature, mature, and we develop also here the gravid proglotids. So the gra so they are capable of self fertilization since na makita they have their they try to house here both their male and female reproductive organs so they could exchange their sex cells 
that would enable them to be fertilized and therefore magkakaroon sila ng gravid proglotis containing the eggs. Then the eggs here are shed by a polysis. So pwede siya ma-detach ang gravid proglotis, mag-rapture ang kanyang uterine, ang kanyang uterus, because again, mag-rapture siya kasi wala silang uterine pore. So all they need to do here is just rapturing that one that would enable that one then to shed the eggs. Okay, then the eggs here would try to be passed on the infected patient having that on their okay, on their um, on their feces, then the egg here having that serrated eggshell and then try to ingest this one the cycle continues. Most likely this one, okay, occur here in the peak. Okay, uh, it would have a different life cycle than the human. 